how some things that seem super important can also seem totally confusing? Well, Rosario Gennaro is back to explain Bitcoin for us. Thank goodness. Coming up next on Science Goes to the Movies. Welcome to Science Goes to the Movies, a look at the stories of science and how they change our culture. I'm Faith Saley, and I am delighted to welcome back Rosario Gennaro, director of City College's Center for Algorithms and Interactive Scientific Software. It is always good to see you, Rosario. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me back. We had Professor Gennaro on just a few months ago, and we foolishly thought we could talk about digital privacy and Bitcoin in the same half hour. It was impossible. So, Rosario, we, we are calling this episode a screenwriter's guide to cryptocurrency. And before we talk money, I want to take a minute and clarify this science of secrets thing that you do. What exactly is cryptology? So, cryptology can be defined as the science of secrets. That's one way to de define it. Um, another definition that I like is from this um, Israeli scientist uh, called Ode Goldreich at the Weizmann Institute. He calls it communication in the presence of an adversary. So how do you communicate uh, when there is a entity that is trying to either learn what you're doing or modify the messages that you're exchanging and so on. Which in today's climate seems almost ubiquitous. Yes. I mean, people almost even feel that way about face going on Facebook. Exactly. So it used to be something that pertained just to the military, then it became something that uh, had to do with financial institutions and today is every, everybody, everybody because we're all online, we're all exchanging messages electronically and we all have to be uh, cognizant of the risks of exchanging and putting information out on, on the internet. In the Vietnamese movie Bitcoin Heist, the Interpol agent needs to prove first that the Bitcoin wallet belonged to the gangster and second that the wallet was filled with dirty money. So is, is either of those things possible with cryptocurrencies? Can, can, you, can you prove who owns the wallet and can you prove or trace where the money came from? So with Bitcoin, you can. You can up to a point. So it's not easy. It's not easy, but you can build some sort of circumstantial evidence that the money that ended up in this wallet, which is this pseudonym associated with this identity, was you can trace it back, hopefully. not n At some point, you may lose the trail. It's not di direct and obvious, but you can, and that's why you, you have a movie about it, yeah. because it's not easy, it's challenging. But with Bitcoin, there are crumbs, digital crumbs that you leave for these transactions that you can probably link to say, oh, this money, usually Bitcoin is are bought on those exchange in exchange for dollars. So you know those, those dollars were dirty money and you see them coming into the Bitcoin network at one of those exchanges. And then if you're able to trace them, then you, will, you can say, well, look, the, wall, the money in this wallet was linked to the money that came into the network from this suspicious transaction. Okay. As you answer my questions, it creates so many more. Sure. Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency, no. is that right? Are there lots? Yes. Okay. Yes. I need to understand, Bitcoin, uh, who, who creates this money? Like, whence this stuff? So, if you had, look, let me tell you first that the idea of digital cash goes back to the 80s. We have seminal papers in the cryptolog cryptology community about uh, how to to create how to use digital signatures to create money to does does digital money always represent real money somewhere it should so let me let me say if you have the centralized uh, scheme in which there's a bank that issues the money, then you can demand that that bank um, has some sort of corresponding 
ledger from the digital money to the real money, right? If I issue this much money yeah. electronically, there should be a backup or real cash back, like like checks. Yeah. Right? So I was going to say this is like really no so, different this than is, a this credit is, card. Right. This is the this is the trusted model. Okay. What happened five ten years ago with Bitcoin was that we moved to this model in which we generate in the network these rare objects and this rare and we give these rare objects value and and now once you find one of these rare objects you can claim that you have one of them and now you have it's like almost mining for gold right if you find if you mine mine and mine and then you find a big chunk of gold then you can go out and sell this chunk of gold but but <clears> the <throat> chunk of gold was created by mother nature or god or right. whatever you and think and here is created Wh by a, by a mathematical process so you have a hard problem that you keep trying to solve and if you find a solution then you get a chunk of money what yes this is like 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 a gigantic it's scavenger a, hunt? It's like a treasure hunt? Yes. But who planted the treasure? Or you can think of it as a lottery. You can think of it as a lottery. Every day, we're going to put out for... But who's we? The network. Whoever participated in, in, this, Got in, it. in, this, in this Bitcoin network, which is mostly miners at this point. The, the, the miners, miners are the ones. M-I-N-E-R. Not kids under 18 no. who are with an, e, with an E. Definitely with an E. Uh, they are the ones who are engaging in this scavenger hunt or lottery, if you want to. And they keep trying and they get this money. And one reason they get the incentive for them is as they do that, they maintain that public ledger that we were talking about before. So the work that they do also assures us this agreement and consistency in the in the ledger. We're talking about a digital wallet, like it's a lovely billfold that you can pick out at Nordstrom's. But in the movie Bitcoin Heist, the wallet in question looks like one of those QR code symbols. What is a digital wallet? Is 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 it is a Bitcoin wallet accessed by a QR code symbol? If it's one of the ways, yes. So um, a digital wallet is a device that stores these digital bits. And it's online. There's no physical digital wallet. There could be. There could be a, you can, it depends how you choose to implement it. There could be an actual, like a USB little uh, thumb drive. Okay. Or it's online. Okay. And to access it, but either way, to access it, you need a secret key. And that secret key might be represented as a QR code or might be represented as a string of bits, might be represented as a barcode. But the secret key is what unlocks the wallet and allows you then to digitally sign this transaction that says whatever money was in this wallet has to be transferred to this other wallet. Is the wallet like what we think of as our bank account? That has our own yes, individual number. Yes. Okay. The wallet is where all your money is. And so, if you, if you lose your wallet, just like in real life, is is your money gone? Gone, gone. And if you lose the secret key to your wallet, the money is is Whoa. the same thing as losing your wallet. Yes. All right. I also hear this word blockchain. It bounced around. What is a blockchain? So the blockchain is how we maintain this agreement among everybody. So this is actually a problem that has been around in the theoretical computer science community, not theoretical, even practical computer science community for a long time. How a set of nodes in a network maintain a consistent view of their share state. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we all have some documents on Google Drive, and we need to make sure that we all agree that those documents are in the same place. In the case of Google Drive, you trust Google to maintain a unique copy that we all, we all access is the same. But we're, to do that, we need to trust Google. Mm -hmm. Google may show you a different uh, version of the document. You think that's the document yeah. I've been working on. But we trust Google, and Google is somewhat trustworthy on this We trust uh, Google so on far. this regard. <laughs> And so we, but how do you do that if you don't want to trust anybody? How do all the servers ag 
agree on the content of some memory of some state in a way that we don't have to trust any one of them in particular. So, and this goes under the name of consensus and the name of Byzantine agreement. That's all this really nice fancy names. Um, and turns out that um, blockchain was a original and inventive way of solving it. And the idea is that you keep appending, you modify your state by appending it, the new state to an old version of the state. So this is this is who owns what today. We're gonna uh, uh, these new transactions are gonna change the ownership structure of this digital money. So we're gonna create a new one, and now we are going to make it. A, this is a new block, and in order to legitimately append it to the old block, you need to uh, create this chain link between the two, which is this hard problem that I was talking about before. You need to, in technical terms, you need to hash the two values until you find a solution that it's correct, that according to some definition of correct. And because this, on average, only one person in the network will do it, if everybody's trying to do it because they're gonna get the reward, whoever finds the solution to append the new state will get the reward that which is this new money that we create. So everybody's trying to do it because they want to earn the money. And at one point, one does it, and, that I'll guarantee, and when this person does it, everybody has to now start working on the next block if they want to earn the money. So everybody, in order, they're financially incentivized to believe that this is the correct state because oh. they want to go and start the new one as soon as possible. This is like this is like a mathematical flash mob. It's like everybody agrees to participate. Right. It, uh, is this happening every day? There are people yes. mathematically working out to figure out like that um, day's blockchain. Am yeah, I using the right language? Uh, yeah, and uh, I think every block a block is created every. I don't remember right now, but every 20 minutes, every what? 20 minutes, a and block. So, and so if, yeah. does that, so since, 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 here, all right, here's this iteration, some transactions happen, moving to a new iteration, right. something in between, some math, somebody worked out the math to, to show the, show the differential, right? Right, yes. And, and, um, and so is that because if there's any kind of debate if, over if, whether we can all agree on this one, they can, po there's only one one transaction, one differential to point to. Everybody, everybody has to agree on the last one yeah. because they're all incentivized to start looking for the next, the next one, one because there's no point to, if, if we're blo a block 10 and we already created block 11, we all have to agree on block 11. To move to block 12. To, because we're all trying to find block 12 to get the money, right? If I keep, if you ask me and you keep telling me it's block 10, like Rosario still owns the money, it's not to your advantage. You need to move to block 11 because everybody's moving to block 11 but because that's where the money is. The money? I mean, is this... The new this, money, every time... This you, money could be... what? It could be Beanie Babies. Like, what is this money? Well, you the don't money, get sent right. a check in the So, mail. again, so now the, 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 the question is, what is this money, right? And that's why Bitcoin value, for example, os oscillates wildly is because there is no back um, connection between any, any physical uh, good. So it's whatever value you give to this rare object that you have mined mathematically. And so... So there is no money, there is no gold, there are no dollars There's anywhere no, in the world no, backing up no, Bitcoin? No, this reminds me of no. Peter Pan. Like, if, like well, Tinkerbell are, will fly if you yeah, clap. And people are comparing it to the tulip mania back in whenever it was in, in Holland. You know, like... It's, it's what am I missing, Rosario? I would never invest or get involved in this at all. What am I? What well, someone who's if a you did if What you do they did, tell me? If you did invest uh, ten years ago, uh, whenever it was that it started, you'd be a billionaire by now. So that's what you're missing. Um, and a billionaire in what, though? Well, you would have been selling it back, right? So you can you can exchange it back, and there is a value. Exchange it back for money. You can exchange it back for money according to a exchange rate which is decided with the same kind of financial market rules that, are, that have to do with stocks or that have to do with 
currencies. This is what I'm wondering. If it, I sound so in, incredulous and maybe even disdainful, well, I don't. Uh, this doesn't like resonate with me, right? I would never get involved. But I wonder if people, people 200 years ago, would have said that about the stock market. Are you crazy? Some You're people, just gonna... right? So it, this, the difference with the stock market is that there's a company backing it up. Yeah. But not, but not necessarily all the time, right? Look at all this mortgage-based securities and all of that, right? So here is the same thing. There is a digital good that we associate value to by some sort of um, financial uh, faith. faith or convention, and then we just move from there. Anyone who has ever snapped a digital picture of their kid or puppy knows that one of the best things about a digital file is that it can be flawlessly reproduced for every friend <coughs> and relative everywhere. But that ease of reproduction was a major stumbling block for digital currency because, in essence, you could keep reproducing and spending the same dollar. But in October of 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto, who may or may not be a real person, wrote a code that solved the double spending problem, and Bitcoin was born. All right, so you cryptologists love your secrets, so I only want to know about uh, Satoshi Nakamoto if it won't get you kicked out of the cryptology club. Wow. I, I don't know. I don't know. But do I believe you? You really, you don't know. Yeah. Nobody knows. I don't know. Why wouldn't someone want credit um, for creating this if Satoshi's a real person? That's, uh, that's actually an interesting question. Um, maybe because he's probably super rich right now. And or she. Or she, definitely. And, uh, so the, and doesn't want the, this fact to be known. Um, and remember, Bitcoin was created by... I, I'll interrupt you to say that um, Satoshi actually is the 44th most wealthy person on the planet. Right. It's pretty good for a math right. whiz, yeah. right? Well, yeah. And um, so they, at one point, they thought that identified the person. And it was actually a Satoshi Nakamoto living in Japan. And they, it's still not clear if that was the right person or not. Um, the the interesting thing about Bitcoin was that it was created by and started getting a foothold in this very paranoid section of the internet. People who are against the government, people who are against uh, any sort of um, uh, centralized power. So, and they are the ones who really started using Bitcoin and where the first success of Bitcoin happened. And so you can- Spread all over the world? Yeah, yeah. And you can imagine how this kind of people are not the kind of people who want to reveal their identity necessarily. Yeah, so, I'm waiting for the next Dan Brown novel to yeah, be about this. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm not surprised that we don't know who this person is. Um, it doesn't seem that he or her, his or her, um, interests are fame or yeah yeah they wanted to put out a way to create and exchange money without a centralized government and they succeeded you know what's interesting on this show we often talk about how to make math and science um, sexy or dramatic enough for pop culture right so right. there's great departures to that this is a very this is a fascinating secret, right. um, dramatic story, and yet, again, it boils down to, like, if you're writing the biopic of Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's probably and putting some, on sunglasses. Yeah. Or we're surprised, maybe this is, a, you know, like a California beach surfer, you know, like, a, who knows? Uh, right. You know? But So these lines of code have the potential to dramatically change how, how we do business. And, but in and of itself, this, this code that this writer created is it is the code remarkable yes so, it is. Um, I may get in trouble here so there, there's actually a debate in the computer science community about how remarkable this blockchain approach to the distributed consensus problem is so there's a there's a part of the community that says well this is first of all it's novel and there's no question that it's novel, that it's some, an idea that nobody had had before. And, and for me, the big question is, why has this idea 
take an old. There must be something in this idea that it's attractive and appealing to the computer science practitioner community, the people who are engaging in this kind of uh, work. Sure, but so why could this get you in trouble? No, because there's another part of the, 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 the computer science community that says, there's really nothing new there. And whatever you can do with a blockchain, we already knew how to do it. And it's really, we knew how to do consensus. We knew how to, um, and so um, there's a lot of people that says, there's not, and this is all hype. It's not just financial hype, because definitely there is a, there's a Bitcoin bubble going on, but there is also a, a conceptual hype on the value of these tools. And I'm somewhat in between. I am not completely clear on what the um, breakthrough was, but I, did, I do find it remarkable. I do find it incredibly ingenious, the ideas behind this way of achieving consensus and this ways of creating digital, digital money. And somehow, I am, to me, the question is, we had other tools and they never took off. Why is this tool really taking off? And I think it, it, it is one of our, as theoretical computer scientists, it, it, we should also try to understand what makes a solution usable and attractive. Well, do you think it's because people. it has an individual price tag attached to it? Or uh, prize, an individual prize? It, I, definitely the money was what got it motivating start. but yeah. it, it's interesting that you now you look at blockchain as a way to solve and at, detached from the digital money application people are thinking of, of blockchain as a way to solve a lot of the uh, uh, computer science um, uh, questions or any other um, for example, I, I'll give you, there was an article in the New York Times about the job market. Can you use blockchain to somehow um, manage the job market in a way that people know exactly where the jobs are and where the candidates are and we all have a clear picture of it. And it's somehow, um, the, you have to ask yourself, we had ways to do it. And now, is this going to blockchain just hype or there's something really there that can help um, bypass some of the complexity of certain problems that we have not been able to solve at, up to this point. On HBO's Silicon Valley, our boys at Pied Piper are lurching towards building a decentralized internet. And if their decentralized internet comes to fruition, Pied Piper will dismantle the fictional internet giant Hooli faster than a big box store takes down a mom and pop grocery. In real life, Rosario, how, how big, how disruptive is this concept of, of decentralized ledgers or, or any decentralized holding of information going to be? So it, that's actually another question in which we are not exactly fully clear at this point. When Bitcoin came out, everybody was like, wow, this is fully decentralized and there is no uh, central um, authority or um, point of distribution, but what happened is that now the mining power, which is really the control power of Bitcoin, has been slowly and slowly uh, amassing into very few players. So what like start? How many? Four and five, six, ten. I mean that that a handful a of handful. people are handful are the people miners of are Bitcoin? controlling the large mining power. Because it, it, How many people are involved in Bitcoin? Do we have an idea? Um, yes, but I, I wouldn't be able to tell Hundreds you right of now. thousands? No, yeah, probably hundreds of thousands. I would have to double check on that. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but the, the mining power, which is where, you know, if you, if you went into Bitcoin because you didn't want to have a central bank issuing money, and now you have a very limited number of entities controlling the issue of money, almost you somehow have, you have gone back to the problem that you were trying to avoid. So um, the blockchain has described at, in, and implemented in many of the other digital currencies that came out after Bitcoin 
has shown that it's not necessarily the eventually the system is going to converge into again a centralized central. mind. So there are proposals right now um, on trying to change the hard problem under under underlying the blockchain to something that is more democratic, something that will allow the power not to be consolidated into very few entities. Bitcoin works, the mining in Bitcoins works by investing a lot of computational power into trying to solve these problems. If there was a way to make it, and so if you have more power, you have more chances of winning the lottery that will give you the next ticket, the next. Which is not how lotteries ought to work. Right. I guess, right? But if you were able to actually make it like a real lottery, yeah. in which we all had a chance and doesn't depend on a much effort, or then it would be more democratic. And there are, there are proposals and approaches being floated around that change the underlying hard problem to make it a little more democratic and less uh, risky to be consolidated. That, I think, would be very, very, um, um, yeah, maybe revolutionary, if you want. It is no secret that we love having you on. Um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but thank you for helping us start to, to mine all this digital stuff for us.